All right, so we have a CT angiogram with one arterial phase, three venous phases. This is the arterial phase in the neutral position. These are the venous phases, head left, head right. We'll come back to them. Uh, we found a bunch of stuff in your uh, anterior compartment of your cervical spine. Uh, our current working diagnosis is when you had that massive accident, there was a, a massive whiplash and the, the hyoid and all of the uh, structures in the anterior compartment of the neck sucked back and, and came closer to the, uh, to the cervical spine. So here's an aerial view. Uh, we can see the hyoid bone on the inside of the carotid arteries. Uh, now let's bring that into a different orientation so you can see it. Okay, so here we're looking at, there's the styloid on the left, which is really not in question so much. It's the styloid on the right. Now we already know from the physical exam that there, is, there seems to be a dysautonomia coming from the anterior compartment of the, of the uh, cervical spine on the right. Uh, because when we, when we start to examine you, we trigger, uh, some would say, a vasovagal response, which is difficult to discern from uh, just the autonomic nervous system freaking out. Um, okay, so uh, we have a, a styloid process that comes down and makes contact with the external carotid. Um, it seems to have clearance between on the jugular, so the jugular doesn't seem to be entrapped there. Let's bring that away so we come around here. There you can see clearly the styloid making contact with the external carotid. Uh, now there is a, a ligament uh, that goes uh, between there. I'll, I'll illustrate that for you. So the ligament goes from here to the anterior horn of the hyoid bone. So it makes sense that the hyo since the hyoid is contracted and, re and, and brought uh, posterior, that this calcified stylohyoid ligament has been pulled down and is approximating the internal or external carotid, pardon. Um, so obviously we wanna do some soft tissue work, anything we can do to pull that out. Uh, now clearly we, are, we knew that there was something going on in the, uh, on the right side. So we compared everything we did an inventory comparing everything that's different between the left side and the right side. Let's see if we got it here. Okay, and let me make that a little better. All right, so are these normal anatomy variant anatom anatomy variants or is it from pathology? This is the internal carotid on the left. You can see how it flows straight through there. It's what we commonly see. Um, now the other one comes and it appears as though it's being pulled back by a piece of scar tissue or an adhesions or something. Um, were you born with, with a, an extra little loop in there? Sure, let's just say you were. Let's just say this, this always had a little bend in there. Uh, it seems as though, again, the current working diagnosis is that there's some scar tissue or adhesion or something that's pulling back in there. Um, and we did look at the anatomy book, the 3D rendering of the, of the anatomy book to to look at those structures in there. Uh, whoops, sorry. And anyway, long story short, we found uh, some musculature, some muscles that, that could be involved uh, since the hyoid is being uh, constricted and all this is being pulled back. Uh, oh, actually, in a moment, we're about to show you what the omohyoid is doing. So this is the arterial phase. I think we're done showing you the arterial phase. We're gonna go into the venous phase in a moment. And we're gonna show you how the, the omohyoid, the, there's the anterior belly, the posterior belly, and the tendon of the omohyoid. The tendon of the omohyoid appears to be uh, entrapping the jugular vein on the right. The jug, well, let's go, without any further ado, let's go right to it. Okay, let's get it for the arterial phase. Whoops, front row. All right, we're gonna pivot. There's a neutral venous. There we go. So when you go to your doctor, he might have in his mind normal anatomy, uh, but everybody's anatomy, it varies quite a bit from person to person. So let's just say 
you were born with your right side being the dominant side. So the mo and we did uh, pulse wave Doppler, and we found that the blood flow coming on out of the right side was significantly higher than on the left. Uh, obviously, see we, we see a dilation in there. Um, and again, uh, back to the physical exam, uh, we want to do a more thorough exam. Um, is the dysautonomia that happens, is it coming from the vagus nerve, the recurrent laryngeal nerve, because this is act functioning as a space-occupying lesion type of thing? Uh, is the thyroid, uh, well, the thyroid doesn't seem to look large to me. Um, we did actually see, well, actually, let's finish up with this hyoid before I go into the uh, injury to the T1 vertebra. And we'll move as quickly as I can. All right, so here we can see where it looks like the omohyoid or some other fascia or connective tissue uh, is in here uh, causing a restriction, which might be explaining the, the back up and through here or the, or the dilation in there. We have seen them on other people where this will get as big as a potato and the thoracic surgeon had to go in there and cut scar tissue and remove and get it to drain correctly. Um, so we've seen that before with bad whiplashes and stuff. Um, so whoever works on you needs to see that in all its glory. That's good. Now let's move into this injury. And by the way, after looking at yours, I had to look at other people's uh, to, to see what, what is normal anatomy. How far back does the hyoid normally sit? And I did find it, uh, just like the textbooks tell you, you know, pretty much way anterior in comparison to what yours are. But I did find other people that have the same injury that I had missed before. Probably shouldn't admit that, but that's the truth of the matter. Okay, so uh, this is the vertebra in question. As we decrease density, you'll see, actually before I decrease density, you can see there's something funny with it. It looks like there's an injury in there. Let me see if I can make it a little better for you. But there is a decrease, yeah, you can see how it looks a little funny in there. Right, so that's actually what tipped me off first. That was the first thing I saw. That it looked like it tried to have a compression fracture in there that made me realize that there was a massive trauma, uh, whiplash trauma in here. Um, it could be argued that these first ribs have come down a little bit, but they're not too bad. Uh, maybe somebody, maybe one day we'll get prolotherapy in, along these ligaments here to, to uh, pick that up. But again, that'll be part of the physical exam. We'll, we'll, we'll see if pushing this down uh, makes you go weak or triggers a dysautonomia at all. Uh, but that T1 seems to have a decreased density to it, and I will slowly decrease, and you'll see how it, it changes right here. What this means exactly, I don't know. I'm saying there was some sort of an injury in there. Um, it would be nice if somebody evaluated that and looked there's definitely something going on with T1 there. Uh, any questions? Nope. There's your airway. Let's, let's get that better. Right, so I guess that was one of the first indicators that we found is that your airway was compromised. There's a shot of your airway doing a little crooked, a crooked thing. I don't know, hopefully the video can capture that very well. But it is not straight up and down. There is some contractures. There is some soft tissue contractures in your, in your neck uh, in here. I can only imagine uh, fascia and adhesions from that nasty, nasty whiplash. Look how thin your air, airway gets in here. I mean, it would be nice to experiment with a CPAP machine while you sleep at night to see if that helps with, helps with anything. Um, any more questions? I think, we caused, I think that's as much as we can glean from imaging. Uh, the decrease in density was in the posterior uh, horns of the hyoid bone and that T1 vertebra. Uh, there is a, a, a tooth in there that has a um, root canal. Uh, the biological dentists are not going to like that. They want that removed. Uh, stellate ganglion, we, again, 
we'll, we'll push on that. We'll see if any scar, what scar tissues are uh, interfering. Can we show the, uh, the thyroid, how it, the difference between the external and internal carotid, how it pushes, right? Because it's, the thyroid is growing in front of the... Okay, there's thyroid gland and there's thyroid cartilage. The thyroid cartilage was really calcified on you and right about at the same level as the hyoid. Uh, so I did show you that at some point. And there is a calcification back in there. I couldn't tell if, if the horn of the uh, hyoid was broken off from that car accident and it's just floating around in there or if there was a calcification in there. Uh, and we'll remove, we're just gonna remove well, there is some, there is the styloid on the left side, styloid ligament is calcifying and moving down. So there is an ongoing process. Uh, there is a process that's still in play. Uh, and I think the mechanics uh, of your neck are going to be improved by anybody that removes, that moves the hyoid and its anterior compartment more anterior. Uh, there's a calcification in there that I couldn't tell if it came off or just from trauma. Um, this is the, this is what I think you're talking about is this calcification of the thyroid cartilage. So you did mention that, but actually I, I messed up the, uh, the terminology. The styloid that is growing, th that calcified over, I believe it was the external. Yep, external car carotid. There's another shot of it. Here we are looking down from, so when you, when you put your head in flexion, I'm expecting there to be a dysautonomia from you uh, poking at that carotid. Uh, the autonomic nervous system is gonna react to that. Uh, and it'll be a confounding symptom to any of your doctors who try to figure this out. And unless we did this in 3D, I don't know that you, it would really jump out at you in 2D. Uh, so we do have a, a, an advantage with uh, this. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. Now, I've seen them where they actually will go to the internal carotid. Uh, I was actually in front of a doctor yesterday, neur neurointerventional radiologist, who told me about a couple years ago about a, a girl that got in a car accident and the styloid poked the internal carotid and dissected it. Yeah, so he was busy. Uh, trying to fix that, but your anatomy is such that it's the external carotid that is in, in question. And if this old injury was, again, if everything in the anterior compartment was pulled out, I think this would this would not be calcified in the position that it is. So moving forward, not only are we going to move all the soft tissues to the best of our ability, we might have to break this thing loose, or it might end up being removed. Uh, you might have to ultimately have that cal that that styloid removed for you to feel any better. Uh, I mean, that's the truth of the matter. We're, that might be the thing that's driving you nuts. Um, but then this, this omohyoid at the bottom contract, restricting jugular flow I, on your main drain, I think that's affecting you. Uh, that's my current working diagnosis.